I think oftentimes when we um, think about this challenge of suffering, we can tend to picture ourselves um, or those we love in this world with all of its suffering. Then we can uh, picture ourselves in a very different world with far less suffering or with no suffering. Uh, and then we might think to ourselves, we might wonder, if there is a God, why wouldn't he have created me in this world with far less suffering rather than in our current world mm. and all of its suffering? Uh, I think that's a reasonable um, thought, but I think it's a thought that relies on a philosophical mistake because it relies on the assumption that it would still be us, it would still be you and me as the individuals that we are in that very different world. And I don't think that's the case. I tell a story in the book of my parents on their second date and they're standing on the Brooklyn Bridge. My dad notices uh, a ring on my mom's finger and he asks about it. And she says, oh, that's just some ring one of my old boyfriends gave to me. I just wear it because I think it looks nice. He says, oh, it is nice. Let me see it. She takes it off and hands it to him. And my dad throws it off the bridge um, and watches it sink to the bottom of the East River. Uh, the question I draw out of that is, my mom happened to love that. Okay, I think that was the clinching moment for her. <laughs> but if she hadn't, if she had decided, what a jerk, what a man. jerk, I better run back with the old boyfriend instead. What would that have meant for me? And I might be tempted to think, well, oh, that might have been better for me. The other guy might have been taller. He might have been more athletic. He might have been better looking. He might have had more money. But if I start to think down those lines, I think I'm thinking in the wrong way. If my mom had wound up with the other guy rather than my dad, it's not me who would have come to exist. Maybe some other child would have come to exist. Maybe he would have been taller and had more money. But it wouldn't have been me mm. because part, at least, of what makes me who I am is my origin the parents that I have, the sperm and egg that I came from, the combination of genes that's true of me. And I think sometimes when we think about the problem of suffering, something similar can be going on. We picture one world with us in it. We picture a very different world that we would have liked to have come to exist in. And we don't think about the assumption there that it would still be me mm. in that world. Uh, I then couple that idea with the question, what if it's the case that uh, God really likes the idea of each of us existing? What if it's the case that God actually loves each individual person? Um, what if he created the sort of world that would allow us to come to exist because mm -hmm. he wanted us to exist, because he desired to um, invite us into relationship But for uh, you to himself. exist as Vince Vitale required, probably, in your parents' lives, in their grandparents' lives, and great-grandparents' lives, a fair bit of suffering that kind of created the kinds of events that led to your parents meeting and, and you sitting here. That's right. And certainly if, if whether or not my dad throws a ring off of a bridge can affect who comes to exist, then changing uh, big things about the universe such that it would be one that wouldn't have the um, threats to natural uh, disaster mm. or the possibilities of evil um, uh, as a product of free will would certainly be enough to, to say that we wouldn't come to exist mm. or perhaps even beings of our type. And in a sense, the, if you like, God is willing to allow that, the level of suffering that we do therefore experience and see and, and evil and so on in the universe because he thinks the end product I, you and me and Julian is worth it in the end. Yeah, not because he desires the evil and the suffering. And I want to be careful here not to um, uh, portray this approach as uh, an overly instrumentalist one, where it's kind of, is this suffering um, uh, allowable for mm. that end? Yeah. Um, I don't think of this so much as a greater goods approach where we say, here's the evil and suffering. Does the good outweigh the evil mm, and suffering? Mm. I think of it more of a love for individual persons approach. I don't think the primary question in God's mind is one of a calculation of whether or not we get overall maximal value or mm. greater mm. world value on this approach than on that approach. I, I see God as aimed for um, beings like us and perhaps also the individuals that come to exist and creating out of love for those. That doesn't mean that it's an easy choice just like I don't think it's an easy choice for human parents to decide to have a child. Um, you're doing something that you know full well 
if you do that willfully, is, is going to result in serious suffering because any child, even with the most favorable life, will undergo serious suffering and ultimately one day death. Mm. So you're doing something, even as a human parent, that you know is going to result in serious suffering and in death. But we think that it could be still an act of love or even an act of courage if it's done out of love for that child with a commitment mm, to do everything you can for that child with a commitment um, to make sacrifices for that child. And so I want to think about God in a way that's that sort way. of analogous yeah. there. That's between... a really interesting way of putting it. Okay, well, well you've got here yeah. in a sense what sometimes is technically termed a theodicy, um, a, a way of explaining mm. why there might be suffering, why God might allow that um, because mm. of some, some other purpose, greater purpose, uh, mm. you know, what, what do you make of this particular well, one? Well, I think there are several uh, problems with it. I mean, one is, is, I think Vince is exactly right, that in a way to wish for a universe in which there was no suffering would be to wish yourself out of existence. Mm. But that doesn't solve the problem, actually. What it merely shows is that, you know, actually, if you ask the question, oh, why did God... It, it, you, could, you can think intellectually it, it would have been better for God to have created a world with no suffering or less suffering that would have been better. Now, I wouldn't wish that be <laughs> for myself because it meant I wouldn't exist, mm. but it would still be better. So, you know, one can judge that it would be better without mm. suffering while acknowledging that would mean not you, right? Mm. But the second thing is, is that the parental analogy is a, an interesting one, but I, I don't think it works for what you're saying because, okay, let's take your, your parents. You say a parent loves their child and that's why they, they bring them into the world. But until that particular child has come into the world, your mum did not love you yes. before you were born. If the night you were conceived, um, one of them had had a terrible headache and uh, a different child had been conceived the next day, they would have loved that other child equally as much. Now, similarly, from God's point of view, it seems if you believe that God loves each and every one of us and he loves us for who we are as individuals, not just because we're carriers of whatever, that might all be true, but until anyone comes into existence, the range of possible people who could have come into the existence is infinite. And it would seem weird to me to think that, you know, God had to arrange things in this way because in his plan, he wanted Vince Julian <laughs> and Justin to come into the, into the world as opposed to any number of other possible people who would have come into the world and would have been just as lovable because that would be the point. Your idea of God and an idea of a parent is not that they create children or human beings and they only love the ones that fit their pre-existing <laughs> template of who they are. Yeah. They love them whoever they are. Mm. So I can't really see how this uh, explanation actually explains why, and, why and God did it. And how it's analogous. Yeah. No, no, okay. I, I think, yeah. Right. No, good, good okay. challenges, yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't want to commit myself to saying this is the only universe God has right. created. Um, so maybe it is the case that God has created those other universes um, that would have been better in some objective sense and would have included other people. All I want to say is that it's not clear to me that God has shown he's done something wrong if he also creates our universe and the individuals that are included in this universe. If we think to ourselves, God has wronged me by creating a universe like this, I think that's at least a more complicated question than it initially yeah. seems like. If I wouldn't have existed otherwise, and if I'm offered a life that mm. is good mm. on the whole. But uh, I agree uh, that there's no reason to think God wouldn't have loved other beings, other types mm. of beings, or even other beings like human persons who are different individuals. And I have no problem um, with, with speculating mm. that God could have created lots of universes with lots of um, different types of, uh, of individuals as well. Mm. To watch the full debate on God and suffering, please visit premierchristianradio.com slash unbelievable.